What are some values and traditions from your culture that have shaped you into the person and athlete that you are today? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I am very biased, but I believe Nigerians are some of the most hardworking people I've ever come across. Um, it was definitely a family value that was instilled to my brothers and I, but I think culturally across the board, um, work ethic as well as respect is a huge thing, um, especially respect for elders and just being polite in that sense. But I think the biggest thing is just working hard. And if you have that, if you have that work ethic, then no one can take that away from you or take anything away from you. Everything that was with that, everything that is within your reach, you can take essentially. What is your favorite thing about being Nigerian? Oh, I have a couple. I don't know if I have one. Okay. I food number one. I know there's like a <laughs> ongoing debate, uh, Ghanaian fry or jollof rice versus Nigerian jollof rice. I'm biased, obviously. I will always say Nigerian jollof rice is better. I think Nigerian food is so good. <laughs> um, I love the new hype and wave around Afro beats. A lot of Nigerian artists that or influence that I grew up listening to. Obviously the sound is a little bit different now than it was like in the nineties and early two thousands, but it's just been really cool to see so many cultures across the board really embrace African music and African musicians. Um, and then I just, I think Nigerians are natural born comedians. <laughs> so just, I know a lot of family functions and family friend functions, it's nonstop laughter. And I have a lot of memories growing up of that. I know you started playing volleyball in middle school. Did you ever imagine that this is what your life would look like? What What do you think that middle school Chiaka would say to this version of you? Oh, I, I absolutely did not <laughs> imagine my life would look like this. Um, I tell people all the time the Olympics was not really a dream of mine, not because like I never thought it would be a really cool opportunity, but I never thought that it would happen for me just because growing up in a Nigerian household, they pride themselves on education. And we joke about like the three careers <laughs> that you're allowed to have, doctor, lawyer, engineer, and obviously professional athlete um, is not in that list. So it never was something I thought would get to this point, this magnitude, I don't know what middle school Chiaka would say. She probably wouldn't believe that this was her calling. Um, I definitely enjoyed volleyball at that age. And it was a really cool introduction because I got to do with my friends, which is the reason why I even started playing volleyball. So to know at that age that I would have gone to this, I wouldn't have believed it. Yeah. I know that for you, everything kind of changed when you got that first recruitment letter, right? You had that kind of mind shift that like, okay, if I can work harder and be better, then I can earn more. What was your parents' initial reaction to you playing volleyball? I know that obviously with you growing up in an African home, like you just said, education was highly emphasized. So what was their initial reaction to you playing volleyball? And then when did they kind of realize that this could be something serious for you? Yes, I think they were very supportive in the beginning of me playing volleyball. I think it was just, honestly, it was a natural thing for kids where I grew up to have a lot of extracurricular activities. I think their biggest thing was school always comes first. So as long as it doesn't interfere with your studies or with school, they were all for it. I think, I think us getting my first recruitment letter is really when my parents were like, whoa, like this volleyball thing can take you to different heights. And originally it was, oh, wow, this volleyball thing could earn you an opportunity to be on scholarship at a really good university. For sure, take advantage of that, continue to work hard. Like everything had a purpose. Um, and they definitely saw the vision after that. And just also visiting college campuses and doing a little bit more research, they became more and more comfortable with this idea of like, it's not going to interfere. If anything, it's going to help her with her goals. When we spoke this summer, I know that you mentioned your former teammate, three-time Olympian, Faluka Akinradoo, who's also Nigerian, was one of your role models when you were first coming up in the sport. Can you talk about how her example kind of eased your parents' minds with you playing professionally? Yes. Oh, my queen. <laughs> I, I think when it 
came time to make decisions on whether I would pursue grad school or further education or take this opportunity to play professional. Um, I definitely had a list of Nigerian American female athletes that I knew um, obviously didn't take the further education route, but took the professional athlete route and have been really successful and have been able to branch off into a myriad of different things. She was at the top of the list and I got advice from her. I think the cool thing about being Nigerian American is we all live a lot of the same experiences. So just like I was preparing to have this talk with my parents um, to kind of convince them that this is something I really wanted to do. She had done it years before. And so I was getting advice from her and she's like, ultimately your parents will come down one, two, we have to understand that like, this is all new to them as well. And it's not initially what they intended for their children when they came to America. And it's just, it's a nuanced thing. So the more you explain, the more you have examples, the more they will be able to be more comfortable with the idea. And then also it's just time, like time tells everything. So she was an example, um, the Agumake sisters, Neka and Chine, both professional women's basketball players, which my dad follows sports religiously. So he already knew about them and just their success um, at Stanford and the success they've had in the WNBA and then in their individual endeavors. So I think just having more examples of like really strong, especially Nigerian American female athletes was really helpful and just assuring my parents that I'm making the right decision. Yeah, I love that. Those are some powerhouse women on your your list. So fast forward to the Olympics. At this point, I'm sure your name has already been in every single WhatsApp group chat from your parents, bragging about all the success that you've had, you know, from you earning a full scholarship to play at UT Austin, where you were the school's all-time leading blocker, playing professionally overseas. I'm sure that you made your parents proud and that that's an understatement. So what do you think it meant for them to see you not only go to Tokyo, for your first Olympics, but to win gold and to do it with a Nigerian last name on an American jersey after, you know, all of the sacrifices that they made in moving here and and raising you and doing their best. Yeah, it's really cool to think about because to your point of WhatsApp, they were getting messages from like distant family members and family friends and friends of a friend of the Nigerian like culture, just about how proud they were of me, people that they don't really talk to a lot or they haven't met. And um, I know my parents are super proud of me and I know I spoke to you about this. It's just seeing a Nigerian name on an American jersey or an American something that holds a lot of weight, I'm sure was beyond their wildest dreams for one of their children. But the WhatsApp group, I think, I mean, to this day, it's so funny. My mom will be on the phone with someone from back home, like, oh, Chiak is in a room. And they're like, the Olympian, the gold medal. It's just, you know, it's, it's really cool knowing that, like, I think it, extends far beyond my parents and I've realized like how much weight it holds it's not just for like my immediate family or even like my distant family I think it holds a lot of weight for Nigerians in a lot of different places wherever they are across the world so I I don't take that lightly and it's an honor to represent Nigeria. We talked a little bit about this this summer but Growing up, it wasn't necessarily cool to be African. You just touched on it earlier, how we're seeing, you know, Afrobeats trending and so much of of African culture is being celebrated now. But I wish that I had people that looked like me in so many different spaces, people that came from my country. Um, Did you have that growing up? Were people accepting of your Nigerian culture? I know that there are a lot of Nigerians in Texas. Um, So maybe it was different for you, but what was your experience like? Did people tease you for your name? Yeah, um, I mean, kind of what I spoke to earlier about this feeling of living a double life, obviously at home and in our Nigerian communities. I was 100% Nigerian. That's all I knew. But I went to school in America and for the most of my childhood in like predominantly white communities that didn't have... It had diversity, but not a lot of diversity, and especially not a lot of African diversity. We still had like a bunch of different African kids at my school, but for the most part, it was predominantly white. And I just, I remember, I think as a kid, like you never want to 
stand out too much and you never want to be like the odd person out. So obviously coming in, having a name that's not typical to like American culture, like obviously a name from a different culture, I think was tough, like feeling insecure or just embarrassed that it took adults or other kids a while to learn how to properly pronounce my name. And for the longest time, I wouldn't correct them until my dad was like, if they can pronounce, and I can't even pronounce it, like all the names basically <laughs> of like the biggest philosophers and athletes and heroes of this world, they can learn how to pronounce your name. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it's it's so interesting obviously yeah getting teased like what is that why is your name sound like this or people not really caring to learn the full pronunciation or just like also being embarrassed if I had like I don't know lunch coming brought my own lunch and it's like jollof rice or some other African dish like not really wanting to have people see it like I know they used to be like oh like it smells or like it doesn't it just looks different and mm -hmm kids are kids so obviously like I can't really blame them for that at that time but even just adults and just kind of like the ignorance they had surrounding Africa just the stereotype them wanting to talk about your experience in Nigeria but kind of like not really being correct about a lot of things if that makes sense just going based off whatever the typical stereotype was at that time but it's I mean it's it's so funny I think a lot of Africans now just kind of like chuckle now that like Afrobeats is such a big thing or like any other like African just cultural things is such a big thing because it's kind of like ah oh, now now it's cool like now you guys want to be a part of it but any chance that you get to celebrate African culture in general I think is awesome so I'm supportive of it I'm supportive of anyone who wants to listen to the music try the few foods visit the countries um I think African culture has a huge influence on the world. So it's just really cool to just see that um, come to life every day now.